Why, it's almost like being in love. Now, Sirius XM presents Charles Vignon in conversation with singer-songwriter Rod Stewart and pianist Jules Holland, exclusively on Seriously Sinatra. Hello, this is Charlie Pignon, and you are listening to In Conversation with Sir Rod Stewart and Jules Holland. Welcome, Sir Rod and Jules, and thanks for joining us at Seriously Sinatra. Thank you. Everything is here. It's lovely. Nice to be here, yeah. A pleasure. You have a fantastic brand new album out called Swing Fever. It's perfect for our Seriously Sinatra channel. Can you tell us how this project came about? Uh, yes. Um, you know, I did the Great American Songbook, so this was a natural progression, although there was a big gap in between. Now, I started to record it in uh, Los Angeles, and it wasn't turning out the way I wanted it to. It was a bit too, uh, let's put it, uh, smooth. And I didn't want it smooth. I wanted it rough and tumble, a bit more Louis Prima. So I thought to myself, who's the man I can go to? And I went to Jules Holland, and Jules will take it from there. Uh. Uh, yes, so I was delighted to be... Um, so actually, it's quite good because it was just before Christmas and about two years ago, three years ago, what it was, and Rod rang me up. And I have... Uh, we, our paths had crossed in music, um, but I hadn't actually worked with him. I didn't know him so well. He said, hi, it's Rod Stewart. I thought, wow, Rod's ringing me up. You know, he said, just want to say happy Christmas. Oh, thanks. He said, and um, do you want to do a record next year? And I thought immediately, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, great, we'll talk later then, put the phone. OK. And I thought <laughs> this must be a hoax call. Just so I said to my wife, oh, uh, you know, um, Rod's church just rang me up. She was saying, yeah, it's OK, dear, don't worry about it. I'm sure he has. Couldn't believe it was true. Anyway, in the new year, he rings. I go to his house and we go through. And he said, I want to record something that sounds, I think, much more like the big band sounded. Not so much like they sound like now, but how they sounded in the 40s and 50s, which had, I think, a bit of a dance edge to it. That's what he wanted. Right. He, he said, I want it a bit rough around the edges and a bit more punchy. So I said, you've come to the right man. <laughs> um, uh, and I had spent my life listening to uh, all of those, you know, listening to American 1940s and 50s and 60s uh, big band records. So I was, it was a great honour to have Rod... Um, sort of ring up and ask how to do it. So it's been tremendous. Uh, it's been amazing fun doing it. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. Well, it sounds fantastic, and I want to start the show with a wonderful song from Swing Fever. It's from Brigadoon. It's Learners and Lows, almost like being in love. has been what a rare mood I'm in why it's almost like being in love there's a smile on my face for the old human race why it's almost almost like being in love all the music of life seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me, just me And from the way that I feel When that bell starts to peel I would swear I was falling I would swear I was falling Yeah, it's almost like being in love Take it away Almost 
Jules, you had Amy Winehouse on your television show singing Teach Me Tonight. I remember singing that. Uh, it's a wonderful song by Sammy Kahn and Jean DePaul. It was so tragic losing Amy because she had that Dinah Washington sort of Billie Holiday vibe. When you first met her, did you know she was so special? Uh, I think the short answer is yes, because she had she had one of those voices she could sing anything, and what she loved she had her great uh, pop. Pop, popular hits that she had, you know, huge hits. But what she was really happiest singing was a lot of the old songs. Um, it's it's so sad that she's not uh, not alive because she would have had so much great music. But it would have been I would have loved to have heard her with Rod because I think that she actually is an example. I think her Rod, you know, Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, you know, Edith Piaf, some of the greatest. You, know, you get a great singer once every sort of decade or whatever it is, really. Yeah. And she was she was one of them and loved that music and was ha and felt. Uh, happiest and most comfortable um, singing that music. We also did uh, um, oh, uh, uh, teach me that song. Uh, it, it'll come back in a minute. Anyway, don't worry, okay. move on. It'll come back in a moment. And um, Sir Rod, I believe you you met Sammy Khan, right? At some of those ASCAP because I'm friends with Tita Khan, who <laughs> yeah. speaks to you all the time. Yeah, you you got to meet in touch with me. you got to meet some of those yeah, songwriters yeah, very, over yeah, the wonderful, years. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, Tita and. And Sammy. And Sammy. Yeah. yeah, and he embraced younger singers, didn't Sammy? He did, he, yeah, he, quite an eccentric man. So let's hear Amy's version of Teach Me Tonight. I'm delighted to say one of the great singers is emerging this year. It's a fabulous new talent. She's been on later, and now she's going to join the orchestra, because we're both great Diana Washington fans. Please welcome Amy Winehouse. <laughs> Did you say I had a lot to learn? Well, baby, don't think I'm trying not to Since this is the perfect spot to learn Go on, teach me Oh, 
Speaking of Amy, she did a wonderful duet with Tony Bennett on Body and Soul on one of Tony's duets albums. Tony is obviously one of the great singers of the American Songbook. Did either of you ever get to know Tony? No, I didn't. No. Uh, I did a, 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 a bit. We did. Uh, he came on my show a couple of times. Marvelous gentleman who 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 uh, he was great sketcher. He did had a beautiful sketchy done of Duke Ellington, and it was so great. It was really filled with love because he'd worked with Duke and um, he also because uh, I'm a big Diana Washington fan and I knew he'd worked with her and I said what was she like he said oh she really liked a party <laughs> <laughs> so he said <laughs> but he was very very yes. he was what you what the, the image people have of him is a super gentle lovely man with this wonderful voice yeah. is exactly how, how he was and I think the other thing which we learnt maybe from this record from which I learned a bit which was what something that Rod wanted was that when I saw him live with his piano play, it was really great. Um, he would do the he would do a song, but he'd just do the, he'd do the, the intro, the verses, the middle eight, and uh, um, but it, it, the songs were all like two and a half minutes long. He knew how to connect it. You didn't need to do any more. And I think that's what you know. That's very much what Rod wanted to do. He wanted to keep them right to the point. Nothing, nothing unnecessary. Right. Now you can keep this bit in if you want, but um, he was in London once uh, promoting an album. And it was about the time of my great American songbook, that was huge all over the world, you know. And the, the BBC guy asked him, he said, what do you think of Rod Stewart's singing these classic songs? And he said, he sounds like a girl. <laughs> BBC was flooded with complaints. <laughs> How dare you insult our Rod Stewart? Well, it depends which girl he means. He might <laughs> yeah. mean Diana Washington or Billy Oliver. Well, Holiday, that and Frank, Louis Prima. Explain to our listeners what you meant, because I assume the sound of Jules Orchestra had a lot to do with what you were looking for with the rhythm yeah, and blues. Yeah, yeah. When, when you say Frank, Frank's one of the, was the greatest, but so you know his band, his arrangements were a little bit too polite for me. I wanted someone with a rock and roll yeah. edge. You know. So kind of like Louis Jordan, is that what yeah, you're... Yeah, Chick Murray. Yeah. Chick Webb Chick, Chick, Chick Webb Chick Yeah, Louis Chick Jordan. Uh, uh, but I do think, funnily enough, when uh, one of my favourite records, um, which I had as a... which my dad had, was um, Sinatra at the Sands. And I think... Our, and that didn't have any strings on it. It was not... So it wasn't lush, and it was with Count Basie Orchestra, who essentially were a blues orchestra. And although they're not playing blues tunes, it's, somehow there's an edge to it. Yeah. So that's very much what I think, what I was hoping Rod wanted, because that's how we play. I couldn't do anything like you heard with the recording with Amy. Yeah. It's just got that little sort of edge to it. So I was so pleased that, that Rod wanted uh, that element. And I think the other thing I realised is that I've got... Um, Basically, at the Sands, the, the, there's an album which he recorded because he opened for Frank, which and that's a great album. But then, of course, when you when you hear the singer, then it becomes, becomes fantastic. To. And that was the thing that was, I think, the most magical thing for me is that. So we do the arrangements, and then once Rod put the vocal on, it suddenly turned it, and I was thinking, oh, the arrangement sounds good, and he liked it, but it would turn it into this amazing song that I, the song I'd always loved, I loved more. And there's a, there's a handful of singers, which sort of people that you play on this show, that can have that ability. To make a song, to illuminate a song, and like make people who, who maybe heard the song before but never noticed it suddenly love that song. And I think for working with Rod has made me realise it is the singer, not the song, and it's been such a uh, oh, honour to do it. all that. Anyway, yeah. uh, but there we are. But Count Basie at the, at the Sands yeah. is a good, he's a very, I think, a similar vibe to this because yeah. it's lively, and the band, they're not, I mean, they're very tight, but there's, they sound like a big band. It doesn't sound like a, uh, um, a Hollywood, Hollywood orchestra. A Hollywood orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> It seems we stood and talked like this before We looked at each other in the same way then Can't remember where or when The clothes you're wearing are the clothes you wore The smile you were smiling, you were smiling then can't remember where or when Some things that happened for the first time Seem to be happening again And so it seems that we have met before and then we laughed 
before also loved before about who knows where For the first time Seem to be happening again And so it seems that we have met Before and then we laughed Before and then we loved Before How about who? This whole album was recorded live, wasn't it? Yeah. There was no, we didn't layer anything apart from the vocals. Jules would rehearse the band in the morning. We'd do three tracks in the afternoon. And then I'd put the vocals on whenever I wanted to. And that's what gives it its live sound. Because it, all the solos were recorded live. Yeah. Everything was live. Just like yeah. the old days. I'm longing to be Longing to be Mmm, baby Mmm, baby Tell me you love me Tell me you love me Kiss me once while the stars Shine above me Shine above me Oh, Marie Oh, Marie Oh, hey, Marie Oh, hey, Marie In your arms I'm longing to be Longing to be Oh, baby Oh, baby Tell me
So speaking of Dinah Washington that we spoke of, you do Love is the Sweetest Thing, and Dinah did a great version with Don Costa. To anything As love's old story Love is the strangest thing No song of birds upon the wing Shall in our hearts more sweetly sing Than love's old story Whatever hearts may desire mm, Whatever faith may send This is the tale that never will tire This is a song that has no end Ah, love Is the greatest thing The oldest yet the latest thing I only hope that fate will bring love's story to you whatever hearts may desire whatever fate may send this may bring love story to you love story to you that song was written by the great Ray Noble who also was a band leader and arranger he wrote the very thought of you among other songs and was a talented musician any thoughts on why you picked this song? And did either of you know Ray? No, I didn't. No, he was, he would have been before our time. I think. But the great thing about Ray, the, that it's, it's unusual. All of most of these songs, and most of the ninety uh, percent of the music that I was listening to growing up, relates to this. It was of course, all made in America because it was invented here. It was right. one of the greatest inventions of the twentieth century, actually, in my view, of the greatest art form that there was. You know, but um, Ray Noble was was British which was unusual, and he wrote exactly the way he thought of you, this and a few others. He had a little tranche of hits that he had, and he was such a success, he came to America. Um, and um, But in this particular one, I, the other thing that's unusual about this is that we lean it because we have a, um, some Jamaican players in our group, and of course, ska music. They would do a lot of these songs, right. the Jamaican uh, bands, when they first came to Britain in the 50s and 60s. And so there is like a little scar element of the, pl the horns playing them uh, 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 upbeat all the time. And um, the soloist on it is Michael Bammy Rose, who's sort of a noted um, uh, Jamaican musician. He's in his 80s now. And yeah. I think it, Rod egged him on and it was he just stood up in the studio and it's one of his best solos ever. Yeah. But you yeah. can hear in that solo, when you hear it, you can hear like the history of Jamaican music. And when people try and play what they think is a Jamaican Scott style, that's it. that's it. So I think that's a great, very unusual mix. Yeah. Rod's uh, vocal, which brings the song, it's charm. It, makes, it suddenly makes you charmed with the, the song. But to have that backing, I thought was, it was great. Yeah. So it's very sort of, it sort of has a sort of London edge to it. Well, speaking of Ray, since it's seriously Sinatra, we're going to play two of his songs by Sinatra. One is I Hadn't Anyone Till You, which a great arranged by Don Costa from, you probably know, Sinatra and Strings, but I wanted to ask you about the very thought of you. Frank did that with Robert Farnan, the only album he ever recorded in Great Britain. Uh, 
I hadn't anyone to you I was a lonely one I used to lie awake and wonder if there could be a someone in this wide world just made for me and now I see I have To save my love for you I never gave my love to listening to In Conversation with Sir Rod Stewart and Jules Holland. The very thought of you And I forget to do The little ordinary thing that everyone ought to do I'm living in a kind of daydream and I'm uh, happy as a king and a foolish though it may seem To me that's everything the mere idea of you the longing here for you you'll never know how slow The moments go till I'm near to you I see your face in every flower 
Your eyes in stars above It's just the thought of you The very thought of you My Just the thought of you The very thought of you My Sir Rod, as our listeners know, you had a very successful, amazing series of CDs celebrating the great American songbook. What made you go in that direction musically, and who are your favorite singers of that genre? Um, what made me... Well, I was brought up like Jules. I was brought up with that sort of music. You know, it was always the records were being played in the house, so it sort of entered my psyche. Um it was. It took a long time to convince a record company to let me do this, but Warner Brothers allowed me to do it in the end. No, it wasn't Warner Brothers. It was Clive Davis's record. J Records, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to do it. You know, it's. Uh, I had the voice to do it. I knew yeah. I had the voice to do it. So, I, It's amazing that you're gifted with a voice that can do rock and do this music because there's a lot of people that they can't yeah. cross over. I went back knowing that I was going to talk to you, and one of my favorite tracks is For All We Know, which was produced by Phil Ramone and has a wonderful string orchestration by Don Sebesky. Yep. Both connected with Frank, because as you know, Phil did the duets albums for Frank, and Don Sebesky, when we did this huge multimedia show at the Palladium honoring Frank with screens and everything, we hired Don Sebesky, who was a great arranger. Did you pick those songs and like ones that you left off, did you know I'm going to do that on the next album? Yeah, it, it, it would. It, it was like us. We had so many, such a choice of songs, mm. didn't we? Yeah. We didn't know which to record, which to leave off. But you, just, you didn't want ballads, did you? You wanted no. I didn't want ballads on this album because I said, as I said, I'd already done it with the great American. And his passing is another big loss for the music world. Did either of you ever discuss with Charlie why he had such a passion for this type of music? <laughs> Uh, well, yes, actually, there was, and there's a fantastic. Where is it? Does uh, his he grew up uh, in this uh, prefab, which were the buildings that were built after the Second World War, where buildings had been bombed, you know, a temporary little sort of single-story thing. And in the prefab next door was his friend Dave Green, who played bass. And he still and and they sort of grew up, and they would they loved uh, Charlie Parker with strings. They really loved, um, and which I didn't know. He introduced me to that, and they loved that sort of. Uh, mainstream big bands and, and swing and boogie woogie music that was the thing they really loved and then later in life um when i mean charlie would do these tours with dave green on the bass right. and uh, and piano players doing sort of playing boogie woogie and swing which i would join him for and his favorite thing was this music and actually he's he collected he had more fantastic jazz memorabilia than anybody i know he gave me as a present once a signed thing from fats waller a poster when fats waller was in london in 19 19- 35 or at the Frinsbury Park Empire and on the back was a chit signed by Fats Waller for and he said this is really good look and he showed he said oh. it's signed by Fats Waller his tour manager has given him 200 pounds <laughs> which in like 1934 in London it's going to buy you a that, new car you know like yeah. it's a big lot of money and Charlie said I bet that he spent it in about a week <laughs> <laughs> not on a car just sort of, <laughs> well, he had a great time good but he's, you know, he, so he loved that he loved that music we're going to play the title song from long ago and far away 
by Kern and Gershwin, and he had a Bernard Fowler on the vocal. Yeah, so lovely. Let, let's yes. hear that. Yeah.
Sir Rod, Ain't yes. Misbehaving by Fats Waller is covered by many singers, but you guys have done a fabulous version on Swing Fever. Tell us uh, about your version and how you picked this song. Well, once again, there were so many songs and we just agreed on it, didn't we? Um, uh, did, had you heard that piano break in the middle? Yes, but, it's I double can't, tempo? but I can't remember whether you said to do this one or I said, I can't remember, but we just like, this was one of the first yeah. ones when I first met, came to your house and sat at the piano and that came up as a thought. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, I think I, I think I told you, listen to the Fats Waller, yeah. the piano solo yeah. doubles time That's in the middle, right. which is really clever. So piano. it was always by agreement. We yeah. never had a, no yeah. arguments or throwing saucepans at each other. No, that, uh, which is quite Made remarkable, isn't it? You know, yeah. you, uh, you, you people, were pretty simpatico on the songs. A hundred percent. And often when you make a record with people, right. it's, it's often they say, oh, well, it's the worst week of my worst month, few months of yeah. my life. And I've left the music business because of it. I've been traumatized. <laughs> it's the opposite. Every song you were talked about. Oh, yeah, we love that because it's such a rich uh, a sort of vein uh, right. that you're mining in, you know, right. it's like it's, it's it's fantastic. So, oh yeah, that's a great one. That's a great one. And I think, if anything, you know, which is what I hope Rod wanted, we brought the simplicity back to them, so they connect. I and think. for the younger generation, a lot of them never heard these songs. These are new yeah. to them. How did how did we learn these songs when we were a young generation? Yeah. It feels like they've always been with me my yeah. whole life. Well, when you sang, this is quite a thing. When we did "Ain't Misbehaving," so I have I've had I had I love Fats Waller, so I've look, listened to a lot of Fats Waller records. But when you did the vocal, you hadn't listened to Fats for years. No. But I noticed there were lots of little things you did, which exactly the right. same as Fats, because it had gone in. It must yeah. have gone in when you were tiny. You know, yeah. it's like it goes yeah. into your psyche. Right. Would you hear these on the radio when you were children? Maybe. Must have. You yeah. must have heard them, well, yeah. Did, well, did your come parents know them all? Did yeah. your parents have records of them? Yeah. 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 It's really, I can never work that one out. And my wife, who's a lot younger than me, I may add, she knows all these songs She knows as well. them too. They're timeless. They're perennial. No, they're great yeah. songs. And, they, and they, they, I think they came from a time when the crafting of songs was like at, a, at, a, at its peak. Yes. And they also, which I think um, is the other point of this record, in the, particular with this record, there's, a lot, there's lots of joy in it because we yeah. really loved making it. And I think there's, it's very danceable. You yeah. put it on and people of, doesn't matter whether there's... It gets them to move. They're five or 500. Yeah. You can start... Doing. No one to talk with all by myself No one to walk with but I'm happy on a shelf Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for you, baby I know for certain, the one I love I'm through with flirting, it's you that I'm thinking of Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for you Did either of you get to see Frank 
perform live? He played in London a lot. Did you ever see Frank Sinatra? I saw him in uh, Chicago. You did? And uh, uh, Yeah, it's a long time ago, and I'll be honest with you. I, so, well, I, didn't want, you know, I was a right rocker in those yeah. days a long time ago. I, I went to see him in Chicago with my girlfriend at the time, Britt Eklund, the well-known uh, 007 film star. And I said, well, we're playing the same arena this week, the next week. Let's go and see what it's like. And we were four rows back, and he was phenomenal. Uh, you couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off him. Um, the only time I've met him, because through Tina, uh, was at a party, and he gave me some great advice. He said, if you want to sing for the rest of your life, he said, you've got to do lots of swimming and holding your breath to expand your lungs, which is yeah. what I still do to this day. But he was phenomenal that night. I'll be remiss if I didn't say I spoke to Tina last night and she said to send Sir Rod her yeah. love. So you guys have a, you've known her for years, haven't you? Long time. She's godmother to two of my children. <laughs> Did you ever see Frank live? I would have absolutely loved to have done. I should too, she's sort of this that the the first real introduction is i say well, i don't know when sinatra at the sands came out 66 okay so i think we got it in a way so i we got it when i was about maybe four years later than that but my dad and his friend um were sort of hi-fi buffs and so they they decided they were going to make this like hi-fi that was you know there was not hand built but you they had to get a quad amplifier which they had then sort of you had to solder yourself and then the, when it was all completed the first record we were going to play was this new sort of because it was it was billed as a new super hi-fi record of sinatra at the sands so we all sat down oh here is the great the moment was we've been waiting for and it goes on you've, 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 there's a slight crackle of the, of the excitement and yeah. the anticipation and then it comes in and you just get a moment where you can hear the clinking yes, of cocktail glasses and you can hear sort of somebody mumbling in the background and there's and a cigarette girl so, and, you, and it puts you in the atmosphere of the place yeah. it's really great yeah. and my dad's friend reardon he said, listen to that derek to my dad listen you can hear everything in the room. Let's play that again. And he played it about six times. And I thought, can we just get to the, the good bit? You know? yeah. This is all right. But he was obsessed with hearing the room. Yeah. Um, but then when the record came on, they, it was like, you know, like they say, oh, you, you, you don't like your mum and dad's music. Well, it was the opposite because they'd go out um, after they played the record. And I just played it again and again because I thought it was so, uh, oh, that's it was great. such a great thing. And a great bit where he does a bit quietly with Bill Miller, his piano yes. player in the middle of it. Hey, drink up, all you people. Order anything you see. And have fun, you happy people. The drink and the laughs on me. I try to think that love's not around Still it's uncomfortably near My poor old heart, it ain't gaining any ground Because my angel eyes ain't here Angel eyes The old devil sent They glow unbearably bright Indeed I say That my love's misspent Misspent with angel eyes Tonight Go ahead and drink up, all of you people. Order anything you see. Have lots of fun, you happy people. The drink and the laughs on me. Pardon me, but I gotta run. The facts uncommonly clear. 
I gotta find who's now the number one And why my angel eyes, she ain't here Excuse me while I disappear You've also covered Walking My Baby Back Home on Swing Fever, and Nat Cole had a great hit of this song with the chart by the legendary Billy May. Any any so- thoughts on Nat Cole? Nat King Cole? Nat King oh, Cole, yeah. what can you say? Just t- t- tremendous. I, I never met the guy, but somebody we, I look up to and you look up to. Mm. And very much, I think, amazing, particularly because he was just good at everything. You know, I mean, yeah. it was, it, 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 you know, he's an incredible piano player, an incredible singer credible sort of a person at presenting himself you know breaking all the the boundaries before you know there were like black artists on the uh, the, the the television presenting stuff and yeah. some of those tv shows are great i saw in fact i saw him doing blueberry hill with a duet with billy preston and billy preston is about oh, sort wow. of 12 or something it's really yeah. great and they've, they've filmed it on the air so i think what an amazing person yeah. you know Great after being out late, walking my baby back home. Arm in arm over meadow and farm, walking my baby back home. We go long harmonizing a song, or I'm reciting a poem. Hours go by and they give me the eye. Walking my baby back home We stop for a while She gives me a smile A snuck with her head on my chest We start to pet And that's when I get Her talc come all over my vest After I kind of straighten my tie She has to borrow my comb one kiss, then I continue again, walking my baby back home. the dark so I have to park outside of her door till it's light she says if I try to kiss her she'll cry I dry her tears all through the night hand in hand to a barbecue stand right from her doorway we roam eat and then it's a pleasure again a walking my baby, a talking my baby, a loving my baby. I don't mean maybe walking my baby back home. Well, let's go out with another song from Swing Fever your version of the classic standard Pennies from Heaven by Johnny Burke. This song, believe it or not, was written back in 1936. Bing Crosby had a hit with it. And then Frank did it with Neil Hefty and Count Basie. But why did you choose this song? Penny oh, I think heaven. we just loved the Louis love Prima it. version. Yeah. You know, where he sings about ravioli and spaghetti and whatever. And, it's just so we, and my, my wife's name is Penny, so oh. Penny is from heaven. Yeah. And we, well, just, we just did a, a video for it which will be out soon and it was such a pleasure to do wasn't it oh we so just, much fun you know yeah. videos aren't fun but we both really it was like yeah. we had some dancers there it was just, it was just wonderful well it this music- sounded like you guys enjoyed doing this album will there be a follow up it all depends if the public like it yeah I think if the public embrace it. it we would love to do another one if they love it Every time it rains, it rains 
from heaven Don't you know each cloud contains hands from heaven You'll find your fortune falling all over town Just make sure your umbrella is up, 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 upside down Trade them for a package job, sunshine and flowers If you want the things you love, you must have showers, baby So when you hear the thunder, don't go under the tree There'll be plants of heaven for you, for you and me Hands from heaven now. Sir Rod and Jules, thanks so much for taking the time to be in conversation with us today. It was great being able to speak with you about this wonderful new project and the songs. And in closing, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but Sir Rod, do you have a favorite Sinatra song that we can play? Oh, uh, I can... Da, 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 dee, 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 My one and only love. Jules? Well, there were so many um, that he delivers, but I think it would probably be uh, fly me to the moon from from the Sinatra. Now this man here is going to take me by the hand and he's going to lead me down the right path to righteousness and all that other mother jazz in the right temple. Fly me to the moon Let me swing among those stars Let me see what spring is like On a Jupiter and Mars In other words Hold my hand In other words Baby, kiss me Fill my heart with song Let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words Please be true In other words
Because you are all I long for All I worship and I adore In other words You have been listening to In Conversation with Sir Rod Stewart and Jules Holland. Thank you both for taking the time. It's been a sincere pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Conversation with Rod Stewart and musician Jules Holland was produced by Charles Pignon. Hear encores throughout the month on Sirius XM, Seriously Sinatra, and in the Sirius XM app.